Tom Albanese, the Chief Executive Officer at Cecil Sterlite, now joining us on CNBC TV 18. Uh, Tom, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to start by asking you how you would characterize the quarter gone by, given that expectations were rather low in terms of Cecil's performance. Look, I think given the production numbers, which again, we knew we were going to be in a low production period in the second quarter from the zinc business in particular, and we're coming in strongly in the second half, these were a solid set of numbers. We were up 15% on the prior year period for the same period. If you look at sort of the numbers before exceptional items, and on a quarter on quarter basis, the numbers are even up more than that. We had, we had uh, EBITDA of 60, uh, 6.3 million, uh, 6.3 thousand crow, good number, and EBITDA margin of 46%. So I think in, in this environment, particularly with subdued markets, we're strong in those businesses, particularly zinc, which are quite strong right now. And I think as I look, as I look at this, I see stronger production numbers going into the second half, particularly around zinc, which is where the strongest market is. So we're looking pretty good. Uh, what would you attribute uh, that EBITDA improvement or margin improvement on realizations as well as demand? Can you talk us through the environment on both fronts? Yeah, I think first of all, um, it, it's more around us having our own ability to increase our production levels because the markets are there, particularly in India, the, the, the markets are taking, taking the product. Uh, we're, we're in a subdued commodity sector. We're going to have to live with softer oil prices and I think a, 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 a more sensitive copper number, although copper prices have risen just over the past couple of days we're seeing strikes in areas like Chile and in um, Indonesia. So I think that the markets are reasonably balanced, but what's important is that for us in this subdued market environment, the the strongest of the metals in the LME complex is zinc, and that's where we, we, we have some good numbers coming into the second half. All right. Hi, Ms. Albanese. I've been just uh, hearing in uh, you detailing your numbers. Importantly, with regard to your aluminum business, could you break that up for us? Because that was, that's something that has been showing an improving trend. And just look at your EBITDA of your aluminum mm. business. It's looking quite good. So break that up for us in terms of Balco as well as Valve. Yeah, I think, uh, again, as I've been speaking over the past couple months, and certainly on your program, that you know, we see a, a, a good net realizable aluminum price. If we look at the LME markets, which have lifted up a couple hundred dollars over the past 12 months, but also physical premiums have also been quite strong. So we're, we're seeing you know, a net smelter return that's well over $2,400 per ton. And in this environment, we certainly are incentivized to increase our overall production level. So you know, over the past six months, we've been increasing our production in Balco. We put 84 pots in on, on our new pot line at Balco. And uh, you know, we have begun the process of putting pot lines in on our captive production. So you know, we've, we, we've flagged the 50 new pots in Jarasuga. Our intention to bring on, as of yesterday, we had about 16 pots up. So I would expect quarter on quarter, um, and I would hope to see this over the next, 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 next year or so, that we'll continue to add new aluminum metal into right. a reasonably strong aluminum market. Okay, uh, Mr. Albanese, then with regard to your bauxite availability, what's it been like? And also with regard to your coal availability, could you break that up for us? How have the e-auction sales been? How much are you importing at present? Yeah. I think, unfortunately, for both bauxite and for coal, it's been hand to mouth. Uh, we have been working hard to get our own uh, bauxite concessions, <coughs> particularly in Arisa, but we've had to rely on the purchase of bauxite and the imports of bauxite in the absence of having our own captive bauxite. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the aluminum market's been relatively soft the past six months, so we can balance this off. Um, coal has been a problem for us and anyone in, in the Indian market right. over the past six months. We've mm -hmm. really seen a complete elimination of the of the e-market for coal, so we've had to rely almost entirely for our non-allocated coal from the import markets. And what we foresee is a higher level of coal imports for India in total than even would be probably estimated by the government at this at this time. And I suspect that this challenge will continue in the coming quarters. All right, uh, Ms. Albany is uh most of your numbers we had known because of Hindustan Zinc as well as K in India. I have to ask you this question. Mm. The promoters have been buying stake in this year itself. They're close to around 5% higher. What's the plan going ahead? I think that look, I think that we like the market that we've seen. So I think you've seen Vedanta acquiring some shares uh, opportunistically of Cessna Sterling in this particular market. And, uh, you know, again, from a, from a long-term picture, I'm certainly very positive on the resources space. And I think as India as an emerging market, ground floor opportunity is a great place to invest. 
consolidation that's going to take place with Kane India. That uh, that uh, that's why you're increasing stakes so that when in fact the consolidation happens and the promoter stake doesn't fall too much. I think I'm looking at the broader markets. I'm looking at the fact that India is a ground floor opportunity and those things that we can control, and then we'll just take it a step at a time. Well, Tom, uh, since half the financial year is done, let me pull out a little bit from just the specifics on earnings and try and get a slightly more macro view from you on where you see mm. the demand scenario, where we are in the commodity down cycle, and how you're expecting some of this to play out over the next few months or maybe even uh, the next few quarters. Okay, well, I think, first of all, most of the commodity markets that we're in are driven more by the Chinese market environment than it would be the Indian market environment. Chinese continue to be the price setter for the most of the commodities, although you've had some like oil and, and iron ore, which are driven by new supply coming in. So you have a bit of an oversupply market in those areas. Uh, Chinese GDP numbers came in last week. They were in the low sevens. Well, that does rep represent a slowing down. If you go back to three years ago, Chinese economic performance was about what economists would have said was the best case. So I think that the managed slowdown of the Chinese economy is actually reasonably balanced and reasonably uh, well placed for the resources sector. I think resources right now, given there's uncertainty in, um, in, in Europe, given that there's still uncertainty as to when you're going to see fiscal stimulus in the U.S. Uh, easing off, has created some unease in those resource markets. Um, from, from my own perspective, the supply and the demand is really reasonably balanced for most of the things that we're in. Zinc in particular, where we see large amounts of global supply coming off the market over the next year or two, that has led to a strong uplift in LME prices. And we'd expect that con to continue in the foreseeable future. Uh, Tom, would you sort of alter your view and, and, and would that view become a little bit more negative if we continue to see very weak data come in uh, from Europe and even from the U.S. Uh, recovery? Because as of now, besides China, those two also seem to be key worry areas, as does Japan. So at this point in time, would you say that your outlook is more yep. negative than positive on which way demand will go or that demand will go south? I think that as long as Europe stays reasonably in a flat to low growth environment. It doesn't go into an, another one of those um, collapses like we would have seen two years ago. And as long as the U.S. continues to have a slow pace of economic growth, look at nothing, nothing spectacular. And again, Japan sort of holds its own. The real driver in price will ultimately be China. So if China, China is the price maker. They are the marginal buyer out there. Uh, the, the average Chinese consumer is increasing its overall production. China consumes 40 to 50 percent of the world's aluminum, copper, steel, et cetera, you name it. So as long as China stays on that path that they're on now, I think we'll have a reasonably balanced market. Although short-term price movements may be driven off of what, people, what, the, what the speculator, what the trader sees going on in Europe, in Greece, in the U.S., et cetera, those long, the long-term price formation is going to be triggered more from China than anything else. Uh, would you be investing in any, uh, so, oh, so let, let, let me put it generally this way, at this point in time, do you feel more bullish about investment plans or are you on the back foot? Uh, well, I think that as we've announced today, we're looking quite seriously at our zinc expansion opportunities uh, within our uh, business in South Africa. So that would, I think, flag with you that from a, on a going forward basis, for those commodities that we like, that we want to you know, really want to invest in, we will be looking for investment opportunities. I think for metals like aluminum, for iron ore, while they're relatively stable pricing, the key first step would be to make sure that we get our existing capacity up and running. So for aluminum, it really is about getting our pot lines up and running, getting the power available for those, getting our access to coal, getting our access to bulk site, and then take the capital we've already invested and put it into better work. All right. When you said opportunities, were you also referring to inorganic opportunities? I think for the most part, we've got a good set of organic choices ahead of us right now. Of course, we'll always be mindful of inorganic opportunities, but, but we, we do have a full plate of organic, um, you know, brownfield, greenfield opportunities on our plate as it sits today. Tom, it would also be valuable to get your thoughts and your opinion on the government's announcement of uh, a coal auction year onwards uh, in order to deal with the situation arising from the Supreme Court mm -hmm. order. Uh, what did you make of the ordinance, uh, some of the specifics in that, but a lot of specifics still awaited? Uh, and do you see big participation in that coal auction? 
Well, I think we are waiting for the specifics, but for my own part, I'm bullish about our readiness to participate in an auction going forward. I think that over the past few weeks, I've seen some encouraging commentary to put all captive producers, whether they're cement, steel, or aluminum, on the same level playing field in the participation of an auction. So I think that's actually a, 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 a reassuring development compared to what we would have heard, say, a month or two ago. I think the other thing I've been quite encouraged by would be sort of the signaling from government um, just over the past week or two that they may be considering the, um, the non-state-owned owners of coal uh, selling coal into the open market if there's an open market there. Clearly, the demand for coal in India is much, much higher than the supply of coal, so the government should be doing everything in its power to get the coal to the consumers in India. And, and, and I, I think that if, if there was more clarity by the government on the ability of a non-state-owned uh, coal producer to sell into the market, I think you'd actually see even more <coughs> opportunities, more interest in an auctioning process. Yeah, but that more interest, Tom, would also mean higher prices discovered in an auction, right? Uh, so I'm just curious as to but what it would you're be, factoring it represents in. a business opportunity. It's a business opportunity. And again, you know, I think that if you really want to bring modern capital, you want to bring the best of class of international technologies, those top flight mining companies around the world that are in the coal mining business that have the highest productivities on a per capita basis, this will do it. All right, Tom, we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much for detailing those numbers and for your outlook over the next few months. Tom Albanese there of Sessa Sterlite talking you through the quarter that's been and the quarter that will come.